The topic of this mini lecture is using solubility rules for ionic compounds. Uh, to apply the solubility rules, you need a copy of the list of the rules. Uh, they can be found in your Addison Wesley chemistry textbook on page 227. Uh, you do not need to memorize the solubility rules. Um, I will be providing you a copy of this list for any test or quiz that you take. You just need to know how to apply them. Uh, quick note before I talk about how to apply them. Um, they use the term salt on this list, and salt's just another word for ionic compound. It just saves a little space in their chart. So the steps that we use for, det for determining whether an ionic compound is soluble or not, uh, first of all, you should look at the cation, that first ion in the compound. If that ion is an alkali metal, meaning from group 1A, or if it's the ammonium ion, it's an NH4, then that compound will be soluble. Rule number one says they're all soluble. Um, there is an exception. It says a few lithium compounds are exceptions, but I won't ask you about lithium compounds because using this list, you have no idea which ones are the exception. So we'll, when you go to apply this list, rule number one for all practical purposes, they'll all be soluble. So all your alkali metals and ammonium salts are soluble. If that first ion is not an alkali metal or an ammonium ion, then you have to look at the anion, the second ion in the compound. And then you'll look for it in rules two through five and see whether it's soluble or insoluble. And then the third step is just to check to see if your compound is an exception to the rule. So as you go through this list, uh, there's only about 14 ions that you're really going to have to worry about. I've included lithium as an al alkali metal on this list, but I really won't be asking you about lithium compounds. So become familiar with the rest of the ions on this list. You'll be seeing them a lot. Uh, a couple of things to note to watch out for. Uh, rule number two uh, mentions the chlorate ion, which chlorates a ClO3. Rule number four talks about chloride, which is just the Cl. And likewise, rules three and five refer to the sulfate ion, and sulfate is SO4. Rule five refers to the sulfide ion, which is just the S2 minus ion. So watch out for those. You may want to pause at this point, just write down this list. Okay, so let's apply this process in, to some examples. So our first example here is Na2SO4. Um, we take a look at our first ion there, and we look at Na, and we say, indeed, Na is a 1A metal. It's an alkali metal, which means it's going to be soluble due to rule number one. And we don't have to look and figure out what the rest of the compound is. We just know it's got an alkali metal in it. It's soluble. It'll dissolve in water. Our next example, we take a look at that first ion in the compound. It's Mg. It's magnesium. Magnesium is a 2A metal. It is not an alkali metal, therefore we have to look at the anion in the compound. Uh, the anion is ClO3. Uh, I will give you the polyatomic ion chart with these, and you'll see the ClO3 is the chlorate ion, which says we look at rule number two. Rule number two says that chlorate salts are soluble. A uh, few exceptions. Again, since we, it doesn't list what the exceptions are for practical purposes, uh, this will be soluble, no, you know, no exceptions. You won't have to worry about exceptions for nitrates and cl chlorates. Our third example, CaCO3. Again, we look at our cation first. Ca is calcium. It's 2A. Um, it's not covered by rule number one, so we have to look at our anion. Our anion, in this case, is CO3. It's carbonate. And we look and see that rule number five deals with carbonates. It says most are insoluble. Um, the only exceptions really go back to rule number one with the alkali metals and ammonium. And so therefore, um, anything that falls under rule number five that's not an alkali, a salt of alkali metal and ammonium salt, they're going to be insoluble. Our fourth example is HgSO4. And we look at Hg mercury. It's not a 1A metal, so we have to look at the anion it's paired with. SO4 is sulfate. Rule number three says they're soluble, but we need to check our exceptions. And when we look at our exceptions, it says compounds of lead, silver, and mercury. Well, there's mercury right there. 
Um, this is an exception to the rule. It's an exception to being soluble. It means it's going to be insoluble because it's an exception to rule number three. Okay, some final notes. Uh, when an ionic compound it's, is dry, any ionic compound, whether it's soluble or insoluble, at room temperature they're solids. Um, they have very high melting points. And so they're going to be a solid at room temperature, and we're going to give their formula a little subscripted S to note that they're a solid. Now, if you have a compound that is soluble, if you place it in water and it dissolves, it makes an aqueous solution, a solution of water, and it gets a little subscripted AQ. If the compound is insoluble, it will remain a solid when it's placed in the water. It won't dissolve, and so it would keep its subscripted S. And please note, this has been a source of confusion in the past, the subscripted S does not mean that the compound is soluble. That S means that it's a solid. And that can be a little confusing because, actually, if you put it in water, it's not going to, if it's soluble, it's not going to keep the S because it won't stay a solid. If it keeps the S when it's in water, it means it's insoluble. And a couple of quick examples here. Uh, your table salt in the salt shaker, that's a solid. They're little tiny solid crystals of salt that would be NaCl with a little subscripted S. You take that same table salt and you shake it in some water and it's going to dissolve and you'll have a little aqueous solution, a little uh, water solution of salt. And so we'd put the little AQ after it. Limestone is mostly calcium carbonate. Um, that's CaCO3. When it's dry, it gets a little S after it because it's a solid. But those limestone buildings, those buildings they have a lot of calcium carbonate on the outside. Even when it rains, when they're in water, they don't dissolve. Uh, they remain solids in water, so they would keep that uh, subscripted S after the formula.